Dual swords are getting nerfed. One-handed fire staffs are getting nerfed. Double-bladed staffs are getting nerfed. And, of course, also shapeshifter staffs. But that's already common knowledge. Travelers, Foundations patch number 4 has just officially been announced on the test server. And it comes with some very, very exciting changes. The one that I've mentioned so far and a lot more. Some weapons are being taken down from the meta. Some other weapons are being placed over there. And some abilities are getting entire reworks. Travelers, you're in for a treat. Let's start from the beginning. Now, if you want to see the patch, link for it will be in the description down below. I'm also going to be sharing it right now in the live chat. Because, yes, I am recording this while uh, live. So travelers, foundations patch number four. Unimportant. Nobody cares. It's a change coming to resilience, penetration and stuff like that. Essentially, it's gonna supposedly make ZBZs run a little bit smoother on certain people's machines. Overall, nice change. At the same time, I don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference. Otherwise, they would have uh, had a little bit more space for this mention right there. Let's jump straight into the interesting changes. So first of all, adventurers, the things that I've mentioned. Fire staffs. The pyroblast ability from the one-handed fire staff is getting a nerf across the board. And I want you to notice, this is a pretty significant nerf, affecting both the ability whenever you're insta-casting it, uh, which is something that you can actually do with this, and the ability whenever it comes to uh, you channeling it for either 0.6 seconds or even 1.2 seconds. Yeah, the nerf, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be the biggest change, but I think it's enough of a change in combination with the other meta dynamics that you're going to be seeing in this patch to somewhat shake the fire staffs from the meta. A weapon that's not just shaken from the meta, but it's simply just torn apart from it is dual swords. Travelers, look at this right here. The spinning blades, the E ability of the dual sword no longer gives you a 50% attack speed buff. Travelers, dual swords are officially dead. Now, just as a um, commemoration of Dual Swords, let us remember together how this weapon made it into the meta. This weapon made it into the meta because they've added a 100% attack speed buff in the past, uh, on top of which there was also an interrupt. You were throwing the enemies in the air. And on top of which, of course, the damage, the duration and stuff like that. They removed the interrupt, which shook the meta a little bit, but not by that much. Dual Swords were still over there. Uh, but nowadays, they were just countered by one-handed spears or spears with a deflecting spin W. Right now, adventurers, they are removing the other element, the 50% attack speed buff. Now, the reason this will affect Dual Swords in a great manner is because this is the only thing that they can use to actually heal themselves using Mercenary Jacket. Without this, the heal with Mercenary Jacket will happen much, much slower. Some dual swords are even going to be forced to switch to other uh, chess pieces, such as cleric robes I've seen, mage robes, or even cultist robes. There are no other chess pieces other than Mercenary Jacket that works with the brawling playstyle in uh, this type of environment like corrupted dungeons or 1v1s. You could have the Hellion Jacket, but it doesn't work in 1v1s. You could have the cultist robe, which works, but you have to kite. And you can have the Mercenary Jacket, which right now no longer really works that well with this. Now, can they still use Mercenary Jackets? Absolutely. Will this be an absolute heavy nerf that makes the weapon useless? No, the weapon is still usable. However, it's not going to be a meta weapon anymore. Uh, because other options are just becoming much, much, much stronger. For example, the Tomb Hammer. The Grasp of the Undead from the Tomb Hammer is getting a hit point reduction of 10%. A weapon that was already strong is becoming much, and I mean much stronger. This will absolutely slap in Corrupted Dungeons, and uh, personally I'm specking it up right now. A uh, hit point reduction duration is gonna last for 3 seconds, so after you use your E, they have less HP, you can damage them as much as you want to. Uh, and yeah, it's it's gonna be very nice because that means 10% more damage overall. I cannot wait to see how this actually plays out. What I also cannot wait to see how it actually plays out are the changes coming to quarter staffs, specifically double bladed staff changes. Now I'm gonna be reading the general quarter staff changes and then I'm gonna explain how this whole thing plays into the actual biggest double bladed staff nerf ever. First of all, stun run. This is the W that double bladed staff users use. Is that yellow W that they just use to charge at you, stun you, and then run away? Way they need to run away or fight you if they want to fight you. The movement speed buff now ends upon auto attack. So, from an offensive point of view, nothing changed. You have the W, you stun the enemy, you dismount them, you fight them. But from a defensive point of view, the way uh, double bladed staff users used to play is pretty much like this. They see you mounted up, let's say we're talking about double bladed staff in the mist because that's where it's popular. They see you, they activate their W, they E towards you, they auto attack you, they stun you. 
then they start brawling you to make sure they dismount you and once you are dismounted they have to start kiting back if you pose a threat to them and the way they kite back is by using their w again which by this time they usually have it back they use the w they stun you and then using the same speed boost from the w they get away from you right now that part is no longer possible but then we have some raising blow changes which i'm going to be reading a little bit later but i want to focus a little bit more on the double bladed staff so this is the first nerf to double bladed staff second nerf is an actual double bladed staff nerf which increases the cooldown by five seconds but hitting a player now reduces the ability's cooldown by 20 percent so if you are using your e as an engage you can still very much use your e like that you're gonna have pretty much the same cooldown uh, the area of the effect is also going to be a little bit smaller, but for the most part, it's kind of the same thing. However, if you are not hitting an enemy and you are using your E to get away, which is also part of the rotation of the double-bladed staff user, then you're going to have a 5 second extra cooldown. Which, by the way, just so I clarify this, you can very much tweak this by using cooldown reduction food or even some traits added by awakening said weapon. But as a default, you're getting 5 seconds extra cooldown. And I want you to notice that this is a nerf not to the weapon, but to the playstyle. The weapon itself, if used in a certain way, is still strong, but if used in an unwelcomed way by SBI, well, that's getting nerfed. And in my opinion, this is how nerfs should happen. And as far as I've seen in this patch, SBI agrees, because this is not the only nerf that has this, uh, this style of nerfing pretty much incorporated in it. The other weapon that's getting nerfed similarly is the blood. Travelers, the cooldown reduction when hitting a player below 40% HP. Uh, basically, when you use your E on the blood letter on a target that has less than 40%, uh, you're gonna get a cooldown reduction. A uh, cooldown reduction that goes from 40% to 50%, travelers. This is huge. However, the overall cooldown is increased by 5 seconds. So, at the end of the day, if you are playing an offensive blood letter and you're not just running away, it's not going to be much of a change for you. However, if you are playing this obnoxious type of blood letter that resets every single time the wind has blown in the wrong direction and it tickled their pickle the wrong way and it kind of hurt, they, they, they got one of those ouchies on their finger and they cannot help but simply run away to the other end of the map to get away from the danger. Yeah, that type of blood letter that is getting nerfed to the ground. And rightfully so. However, the fighting blood letter is very much still alive. And I want you to notice that both the blood letter changes and the double bladed staff changes are not necessarily changes or nerfs, I should say, coming to the weapons themselves. They are nerfs coming to a playstyle. And this playstyle is commonly known as the ratting playstyle. It's clear that the devs are paying some attention to that. And it's clear that the devs are incorporating certain mechanics in the game or certain nerfs in the game or changes, I should say, that are fighting this playstyle. Now, I want to make myself very clear, and I think the devs agree with me when I say this, I don't think that ratting shouldn't be a thing. I know, I hate when it happens to me. I know, it's boring when you do it yourself because you just wait for people to do content so that you can have a chance of doing content yourself. I know, I know, I know. However, this is a sandbox game. The more options of gameplay you have, the better the game itself is. However, uh, there are some things that should be off limits. And while ratting should very much be allowed, it shouldn't be encouraged. And uh, for the longest time, ratting was not only allowed, but encouraged. So I'm very happy to see that the devs are taking steps uh, to actually nerfing that playstyle. Another playstyle that needs a nerf, in my opinion, is the overly safe playstyle. This is a game about fighting. Now, you should absolutely be able to play overly safe because this is a sandbox MMORPG. You should be able to play however you want to play. However, from a dev's point of view, they should approve or disprove certain playstyles. They shouldn't remove them, they should just make a certain playstyle a little bit harder to achieve. By making it harder, it doesn't make it unplayable. It actually makes it more rewarding to play if you actually know how to play it well. It makes it more surprising for the opponent. For example, look at Assassin Dead Givers. Assassin Dead Givers are pretty much dead nowadays, but in the right hands, against the right opponent, you're gonna be able to slap with them. The unprepared opponent gets clapped by Assassin uh, Dead Givers, just the prepared opponent knows how to counter it. In my opinion, that should be the case for ratting. Ratting should be something that happens at the low-ish uh, experience levels. It shouldn't really happen in the highest end, because it's just, it's just not rewarding. Whenever you go with 8.4s and you wanna fight another 8.4, and you have like a thousand rats preventing you to fight. Now, while it should absolutely be a thing, 
it should be discouraged. And you discourage it by adding this type of mechanics that I absolutely love to see. Now, Adventure, since this patch is kind of long, I'm going to be skipping through some things right now just so that we get to the whole thing. I want to mention the changes coming to Curse Staffs. The Dark Matter W from the Curse Staffs is getting a buff across the board, which is always welcomed. I don't think it will replace Desecrate or Grudge. The Energy Shaper is also getting a buff across the board, especially in PvE. Just look at this thing. Don't get me wrong, it's also a PvP buff, but the PvE buff doubled the damage. That's wild. More than double the damage, actually. And there are some other notable quarterstaff changes, such as the Raising Blow getting a little bit of a buff in terms of cooldown reduction. Uh, it's gonna reduce more of a cooldown. The Separator ability becomes really interesting by also dealing damage to all untargeted enemies hit. Then, of course, of course, how could I have skipped this? The Shapeshifter Staff nerfs. Travelers... The only usable Q of the shapeshifters, the pull shock, is getting a nerf. Heavy nerf. The only really good staff for ZBZs in the shapeshifter line, the Earth Rune staff, is getting a nerf as well. A pretty significant nerf, if I may say so. Um, yeah, pretty much. Shapeshifters have been nerfed by a thousand times, and they still need a couple more nerfs. But I'm surprised to see that one of the nerfs that we are waiting for for a very long time is still not here. And that nerf is a nerf that has to happen to Polymorph. Polymorph is the most obnoxiously strong ability in the whole game. You are locking your opponent out of doing anything. The opponent cannot do a single thing. You're just transforming him into a squirrel. And uh, yeah, it's end of the game if you're fighting against the prolling staff with max stacks and the ability to use W and Q you three times, pretty much. There's also some harpoon changes. Uh, this is a W from all spears. Uh, the max range has been increased and the projectile speed, um, yeah. <laughs> I guess now I can say travel speed does not matter. What is this buff SPI? Come on. 0.20 seconds buff. Huge! <laughs> you know, it is what it is. The immortal ability from the Mistwalker Hood is also getting a buff in terms of having less cooldown, but also uh, a little bit of a smaller duration. We have some Mistwalker Shoes buffs in terms of the cooldown as well, getting a little bit lowered, and some pretty significant Royal Boots uh, changes. This might actually make it more usable and a replacement for the classic uh, plate boots on the second spell. Pretty much, you're gonna be getting one extra percent of movement speed, which might not seem like much, but it slowly adds up. You know what also slowly adds up? My will to play whenever you guys join our guild. Yes, we've officially started a guild on the European server. Right now it became a pretty big alliance. We have around 600 people among us, one of which could be you, Travelers. Because guess what? We are going to be launching a third guild very, very soon. So if those guilds are occupied, just search for the Alliance Tag Roundtable Hold or join our streams if you want to know more information or simply also join our Discord server on which we are active on a daily basis. Shameless plug adventures. It is what it is. You know what else is a shameless plug? This video right here, which you should absolutely watch. Why? Because why not? I don't see any reason why you wouldn't watch it.